Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and I appreciate the witnesses for being here today. First, let me say that I come from the great state of Oklahoma, and in Oklahoma, we have some of, if not the most secure election laws in the entire country. Um, and, and as such, in 2010, we passed uh, a voter initiative to require voter ID uh, or voter verification at the polls. It passed by almost 75%. And I believe that if you were to put a ballot initiative together nationally to ask if citizens should be required to uh, verify proof of identification at the polls, that you would see an overwhelming number of individuals would support that initiative. Um, Ms. Weiser, I want to start with you. Um, you earlier mentioned that the, um, I'm sorry, when in 2020 and 2022, there were mail-in ballots uh, submitted across uh, the District of Columbia um, and mailed out to every single general election voter. Is that correct? Yes, I believe that is correct. And in 2020, wasn't it true that there were ballots that were not accepted and or voters that were not able to vote? And because of that, there was the opportunity for email ballots. Is that correct? I, I am not familiar with the email ballot, um, uh, w with whether or not there were email ballots. Ms. Evans, would you like to address that? During the 2020 primary election, um, individuals did not receive their mail ballots and due to health reasons, we utilized the, um, the platform we have for military and overseas um, voters. And so we did follow the guidelines as far as acceptance of those ballots through that, um, through that channel. Do you believe, Ms. Weiser, that accepting email ballots is, uh, diminishes voter confidence? We, we believe um, that um, internet voting is not yet secure nationally as a standard um, to, to roll out across the country. Mr. Speaker, yeah, yes or no, it's not, it's not confident. There's, there's in, in lack of voter confidence. In circumstances, um, a small numbers of ballots can be done securely. Um, we would not recommend expanding that. Mr. Spees, if I can ask you the same question, do you believe that email ballots would diminish voter confidence? Yes. Mr. Cuccinelli? Absolutely. And why is that? Well, because we are all in our own lives all too familiar with uh, the hacking of our own email systems, much less everyone else's. And so when you are reliant on that form for voting, especially in an arrangement where there's no identification even required, much less attempted, um, it guts confidence in the outcome. And isn't that a reason why we actually ask for uh, proof of identification when we go to the polls, Mr. Spees. We want to be able to ensure that the individual that is submitting their ballot is actually who they say they are. Is that correct? That's exactly right. And I would just note that the 75% statistic you noted in terms of voter ID for Oklahoma is very similar to all the national polling out there, which shows over 75% support for voter ID. And currently, voter ID is not required for mail-in ballots. Is that correct, Ms. Evans? That is correct. And you mentioned in your testimony that signature verification is used. How confident are you in signature verification? And if I can ask, do you sign your signature the same way today that you did 20 years ago? Um, I am confident in um, signature verification in the District of Columbia. We have trained individuals who have uh, numerous signatures for which they can use to um, verify. Where do you the get the signature information yeah. that you're we utilizing? Get, yeah. We get some of it from the Department of Motor Vehicles. We get some of it from um, actual voter registration applications. And when individuals vote in person, they sign the poll pads, and those signatures are captured. So we have a number of signatures we can use to verify signature. In the event that we are unable to verify signature, because as you mentioned, signatures do change over years and if an individual cannot verify that signature it is elevated to another level of review if the second level of review still cannot verify we have a cure process where we reach out to the voter and we get a signature and we get a certification thank that indicates that that is thank you signature. my time is limited so I want to make sure I, I get the last question and that is in regards to
to the um, mailed ballots that were done in 2020 and 2022, uh, every voter received a mail-in ballot for the general election, but there was a significantly high number of return ballots, 11% in 20 and 17% in 2022. What are you doing to ensure that you are um, providing due maintenance on the voter lists uh, in the District of Columbia? Actually, the returned mail ballots assist us in our list maintenance process. Once we get those ballots, that will serve as the first mailer in that process, and that um, will lead us to our um, process where we can move voters to an inactive status.